turn around very slowly or flee the bathroom? Don't flee the fucking bathroom. Nope. We're born in the moonlight. Ain't a fan to say. Can't be the sunlight. Hello, beautifuls. This is Aromi here. Welcome back to Changeling. We're here. Back from talking to Vilos about the actual whole story. So, hopefully, everything's kind of fixed now. I hadn't really been prepared for the whole truth to come out. There was a part of me that was that felt relieved, though. I was still pretty anxious about it all, but Violet seemed content to, at least for the time being, allow Ellie to be in charge of keeping track of Spencer. And in the meantime, they were going to keep an eye out for one thing I saw. For that thing I saw, sorry. Violet unfortunately didn't have much to go on. He said there were quite a few odd things lurking about town, especially this time of year when the new things were drifting in. And old things that usually stayed quiet were starting to stir and wake up. Apparently, my description wasn't all that helpful, and it wouldn't—it couldn't be any number of things. I guess the smoky tendrils look was in for th for ghosts these days. When I finally go got up to my room, I dropped my things on the floor and flopped onto my bed with a groan. My phone chimed almost instantly—a text from William. Oh snap! Is everything okay there? Oh, yeah, no problem. Thanks for checking on me. Okay, be careful. I will. Don't worry. I guess, uh, I'm sorry, I have Shelly's thingies. I'm sure that'll work. I smiled slightly as I set my phone on the nightstand. Ugh, so tired. But I wanted to write down everything that had happened. I wearily grabbed my backpack and pulled out my journal. Come in. Uh, ooh. Hi, Spencer. I was surprised to see Spencer come in instead of Mom. We looked at each other silently. To be honest, neither of us had said a word since the night I was attacked. I felt suddenly awkward facing him, especially since I had no idea what he was going to say. He shut the door behind him and came toward my bed. Did he shut it nicely or loudly? He sat, I sat up immediately on edge. Sensor paused, looking at something on the floor. Without a word, he bent to pick up my cell phone. Oh, I didn't hear that fall. He set the phone back on the nightstand. Oh, sweet, I guess. I wanted to talk. I figured as much. His gaze fell on the notebook. I quickly flipped the cover shut. I'm surprised you still use that code. It's convenient since no one else can read about me since you forgot it all. Forgot it and all. Yeah. Do you want something? Answers. I want to know everything. I know something is going on, and now you know that I know. Oh, sorry. Now that now you know that I do. There's no reason to lie anymore. Tell me who you are, really. Or tell me who you really are. Yeah. Look, I'm not getting into that who are you really nonsense with you. But just so you know, I want answers too. Ever since we moved back in all this, this weird stuff started happening. I've been looking for answers. It's not like it's been just since we moved back. Fine, it's been going on for years, and I'm the only one out of the loop on it. Whatever. Why don't you tell me what you know? Then I'll tell you what I know. For instance, what happened five years ago? You stiffened when I said that. Not that easy, is it? So I guess I'm not the only one keeping things to myself. When you really want to talk, I will too. You stared at me a minute longer than left without another word. I let out a long sigh and fell back on my bed. Bleh. My phone chimed again. I went to reach for it when I realized it wasn't on the nightstand. It was on the floor, a few inches from the bottom of my bed. What in the fuck? Did that spirit follow me? Again? I picked it up and checked it. Another text from William. Good night. You too. Try to sleep, okay? Yeah, I will. Oh, <laughs> so sweet. I set my phone in the center of the night table this time. I really just wanted to sleep and not deal with any of this. Spencer, least of all. I should probably go spread my herb barrier thing. <laughs> but first, I want to make sure my alarm clock was set, because without it, I'd probably sleep until noon the following day. When I rolled over and reached for the clock, I realized my phone was gone. Again? I picked over the edge of the bed, and there it was on the floor again. With a frown, I picked it up and set it back on the night table, then went to get ready for bed, really hoping I was able to sleep okay. Chapter 5, Bits of Broken Glass and my dream was standing outside on a hill above a dark forest. The cold breeze lifted my hair from my shoulders, sending a pleasant chill down my back, while strands of hair blew across my eyes, and I lifted long, pale fingers to sweep them back behind the pointed ears. The wind blows out the gates of the day, the wind blows over the lonely of heart, and the lonely of heart is withered away, while the fairy stands in a place, in a place apart. The words torn from my lips by the wind almost as, I, as soon as I spoke them felt quaint and old. There was a sense of nostalgia around them, and I thought I recognized the poem they were from, though I couldn't remember who wrote it. 
In the distance and on the horizon was a dark hill atop which was a ring of white trees. They had to be enormous given, given their size in the hill's distance. Something sparkled between the tree trunks. I reached my hand out to it. A deep sense of longing washing over me. I know that place. That's... I don't know. <laughs> I started awake to the sound of my clock blaring. Rolling over, I slapped the top of the clock a few times. Finally silencing the alarm. Sorry, it's hiccup. What? What was that dream? It was already slipping away from me. The white hair. I've had that sort of dream before, enough to know the face I'd had. Though I hadn't seen myself in this one, but I'd seen her before. Sometimes I dreamed I was her. Sometimes I just watched her. A strange elf-like figure who had haunted my sketches and paintings for years. And of course, my dreams. I sat up with a groan rubbing my head. What was the poem I was quoting? The exact lines had already faded beyond recall. I shrugged it off as unimportant. I was still in my bed. That was what really mattered. The past few days, I've been desperately trying to get back to normal. It wasn't quite there yet. I still had moments where I'd wake up in panic or standing in my room in the middle of the night, but it was better. I wasn't leaving my room, which was the most important thing. That at least had a lid on it for now. The weird dreams? Well, I was kind of used to those already anyway. I'll trade the weird dreams for sleepwalking any day. I threw the blankets off, rubbing my arms when I realized how cold it was in my room. Yeesh, maybe someone turned down the heat turned the heat down too low. It was freezing. I swung my feet over the edge of the bed, wondering if Spencer was already out of the bathroom. How? I jerked my feet back in pain the moment they touched the floor. On inspection, I didn't see anything that really stood out. The sole of one foot was a little red, but neither was tender to the touch. Hmm. I shot a glance toward the door where my little bear of herbs was, presumably still on the floor, keeping me inside. Could that be the cause? It was the only thing I could think of, but if so, it would mean I'd have tried pretty hard to leave. But why? Why am I trying so hard to get out at night? I sat there for a moment, chewing up my lip as I contemplated that. I had no answer for it, really, but I was glad the bear was working. I set my foot back on the carpet and flexed my toes. Now that the horror from the weekend attack was starting to fade, I was able to face it with a little more clarity. Nothing had happened since then, so it didn't seem like it was a random attack. Me being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Which meant as long as I stayed inside, everything would be okay. So the barriers was working, no matter how hard I wanted to get out and go somewhere else. I was safe, and that's what really mattered. Didn't mean I didn't need to find out what was sleepwalking in the first place, though. Still, I needed to be sure to thank Shelly properly. The first order of business after getting out of bed was to go undo the door barrier with the mollifying herbs. But, when I checked the desk drawer for my herbs jars, gone. A quick glance around the room didn't immediately reveal their location. I was pretty sure I'd put them away. I stepped in the sound of glass being set down behind me, and sure enough, the jar of herbs was on the windowsill when it definitely hadn't been there a minute ago. Brown, I was chattering angrily somewhere, but I didn't see it. I had back the urge to kick something. Why it was picking on me now, I didn't know, but this kind of thing had been happening way too much lately. I slid and went to retrieve the jar, turning it over in my hand. It was broken, damaged, or messed up in any way, thankfully. It wasn't, sorry. I, I said it was. I'm glad that I'm going to have to find a way to appease that stupid thing. I should have done it earlier when his target was still Spencer, but I had had so much to deal with that I had never really gotten around it. It was good that I had apparently forgiven Spencer for whatever he had done to make him mad, but now that I was the target, I definitely wasn't going to be able to put up with this stuff, especially because of me things like the herb jars were necessary for me for my safety. It wasn't the same as a toothbrush being tossed in the toilet or missing homework. Missing homework didn't get you killed. The problem that was that I couldn't think of anything I'd had done to upset it. Then again, fairies were notoriously sensitive souls, so who even knew? Still though, what was weird was that the pranks on me were different from the kind I'd played on Spencer. Things would go missing but immediately show up again. Something would fall over, then write itself then right itself. It was like it couldn't make up its mind if it was mad at me or not. Plus, I saw it roaming around, chattering in its dry leaf voice as if complaining to someone or something. Or I catch it sitting on my windowsill, glowering at nothing. Despite all the prowling around and seeming irritated, it was apparently rather indecisive about whether it really wanted to take its anger out on me. I had no idea what was going on with it. Ugh. Fairy drama. So annoying. I was trying not to let it bother me. So far, it was more a minor annoyance than anything, and I had other things to focus on. Besides, at least it was leaving Spencer alone now, still. And he seriously needed to do some reading on coexisting with brownies very soon. At any rate, now that I had located my jars, I took the herb and dispelled the door barrier. And the one in the window that I had done out of fear of sleeping me might get desperate. 
Spitzer had already vacated the bathroom, so I went to clean up and brush my teeth. It was good to see that the circles under my eyes had, been fe had faded. I yawned and finished rinsing my mouth. Ichiko? I whirled around at the sound of the voice. Nothing was there. St still, I started around the room. I had been so sure I heard my name. It had been quiet but very clear. Goosebumps rose on my arms, and I was overcome with the feeling of something right behind me. It was stupid, of course. There was nothing behind me but the sink and mirror. There was definitely nothing that could be back there. Turn around very slowly or flee the bathroom? Don't flee the fucking bathroom. Nope. As much as I knew there was something, there was nothing back there. I wasn't going to chance it between ghostly encounters in the woods, a stupid house brownie, sleepwalking. I didn't want to deal with anything else that might pop up in my life. And I could not handle something creepy lurking in the mirror. If nothing was there, great. I wasn't going to find out though. <laughs> I flew the bathroom, slammed door shut behind me without looking back. I really did hear my name, though. It wasn't the brownie. I'd never heard it speak in a regular voice. Ugh. I didn't want to dwell on it too much. I tried to shake off the feeling of unease. I don't know if that was a good choice or not, though. Like, wh what if I... What if I did turn around slowly? I took a deep breath and whirled around. When I saw a strange face flash in the mirror... Fuck that! <laughs> for just a second, a little school of panic scrambled back into my bedroom. I stood there for a second, right on the other side of the door, trying to catch my breath. And trying to forget that I just grew like a little baby piglet. Ichiko, is everything okay up there? Y yeah, I just slipped in the bathroom. Someone left some water on the floor. Please be careful and be sure to clean that up. Y yeah. Heart still flooding rapidly, I made myself peek back in the bathroom. From where I was, I could barely see the mirror, and in it, it was just me. That face, though. That face was from my dream earlier. Ugh. I was going to assume that was from the remnants of sleep deprivation. Not to mention generally being on edge from some sleepwalking, the ghost issue, and stupid, stupid brownie. Maybe that was better, because we actually saw a little bit about us, I guess? I took several deep breaths trying to slow my heart rate as I went to finish getting dressed for school. Unfor sorry, fortunately, there was no further annoying brownie mishaps, and I was able to dress in peace. Grabbing my phone, I headed out the door and down the foot front stairs, where I nearly collided with Spencer about halfway down. He moved out of the way silently and waited for me to go past. Try to talk to him or ignore him? Try to talk to him. This route, we're trying to get to, to, to be close to him. Good morning. I almost didn't say anything, but I didn't care what else was true in our lives right now. He was my brother. It was stupid to be afraid to even speak to him. I guess. I mean, <coughs> I extended the offer. He looked away, refusing to meet my eyes. But still, as far as answers, I went that the as as far as answers went, that wasn't the worst I'd ever gotten. I started past him. Sounded like he had a rough night. I glanced back at him curiously. His expression was always difficult to, was always so difficult to read. He didn't seem angry or anything, but he was definitely studying my face intently. Is that so? You're making a lot of noise, talking to yourself. I grimaced. Making noise, huh? Guess I'd answer that. I had definitely tried to get out of my room. I hope you're not planning to sneak out again anytime soon, after what happened last time. Sneaking out was never my plan to begin with. I haven't been doing it on purpose anyway. Besides, I already have a solution to that, so you don't have to worry about it. Hmm. <laughs> the next time you see me doing it, you could always, I don't know, wake me up? I shot him a dry smile. Just a thought. I went past him and down to the kitchen before he could answer. I poured myself a cup of coffee and plopped down at the island. As usual, mom had already set out the egg, to egg toast and some fruit. Fighting back a yawn, I reached for my toast, figuring I'd eat at least a little of it so mom wouldn't complain. And not feeling like a zombie, I, a zombie meant I was actually kind of hungry too. Come to think of it, it felt like this was the first semi-normal morning I had for a while. It was nice. I lifted the toast absently and was staring at the window as I wondered what my next course of action would be. I paused when something tugged my leg, and of course there was the crackling, twiggy sound in the brownie's voice. What does that stupid thing want? Kick it away! Fuck no! It's telling me the spirits are with me! <laughs> Try to find out what it wants. Oh my god, it was like having an incredibly annoying pet that was half cat and half toddler. <laughs> With a long suffering sigh, I glanced down at the little beast tugging at my leg. What do you want? It immediately released me and started up the side of the island with a surprising amount of dexterity, like a weird little pantless spider. And again, all spiders are pantless, so that comparison doesn't really work, does it? What are you doing exactly? Before I could react, it was on the table and touching my food. Hey, that's... Ugh, gross. Because that meant no breakfast for me, considering the way it's graveled around the floor. I highly doubt its hands are clean. <laughs> I rested my elbow on the tile, watching it with annoyance. I really don't know why you suddenly hate me. 
didn't respond to what I was saying, but it did fish something out of my toast. Whatever it was caught the light as, at light as the brownie held it up and looked at me expectantly. It's showing me something. I leaned down and... Glass? Why is what? And glass in my food? What? I nearly eaten that. The brownie chattered at me and pitched a glass across the kitchen. Oh, come on. Someone's going to step on that. Good grief. By the time I retrieved the broom and turned around, it was already launching my toast into the trash bin. Okay, okay, I get it. I'm not going to eat it, jeez. Oh, the brownie's actually saving me. It's trying to tell the spirit I'm not bad, so that's why the spirit and the brownie are always like, the shit is going up and down. I'm so confused. The brownie was pranking me like mad lately, but it stopped me from eating glass-filled toast. If it had put the glass there in the first place, why would it stop me from eating it? But if it hadn't put the glass there, who had? Glass and food is going a bit beyond a prank anyway. I heard Spencer's footsteps coming down the stairs, and a little seed of suspicion formed at the back of my mind, but I shrugged it off. No, I didn't think he'd go to that length. What purpose would it serve anyway? I mean, I didn't exactly know the full details of what happened to people who ate a piece of glass, but it couldn't be good. Spencer was a creep, but he wouldn't try to kill me. But if it wasn't him and it wasn't the brownie, then how did glass get in my toast? It would have to mean something else did it, something else that was also in the house. I didn't like that thought at all. It was surely most—it it, it was surely more likely that it had been an accident, right? I don't know, but the brownies were cute. I never noticed the brownie had wings either. <laughs> and look how cute it is. I mean, it was plausible that someone broke something in the glass, made its way into the cookware. It was hard to believe Mom wouldn't notice, but anything was possible. Either way, I was going to need to be more careful. Maybe what I needed wasn't a way to appease the brownie, but the thinking. As soon as I got everything cleaned up, I grabbed my things and hurried outside, still mulling it over. Ugh, too much to worry about. Now I drove up at that moment, tapping her horn and distracting me from the toast situation. I quickly joined her in for a front seat. Hey, you're looking better this morning. I'm not so sure of that. Herb still holding up? So far. How's Spencer? Well, nothing so far. This had become our new routine. Ask about the herbs, ask about Spencer, check in on the situation, and make sure things weren't exploding. Ugh, I hate causing trouble for her. I feel like we've said once it's a weird thing where he knows something is going on, and I know that he knows, and he knows that I know that he knows, and I know that he knows that I know that he knows. <laughs> it's so on. It's less tense, but we haven't really talked properly or anything. You guys are so weird. I know. Anyway, you're looking pretty tired. She laughed awkwardly. Still being kept busy and all that. Yeah. How's, um, ghost thing going? I haven't really heard any updates on that. I kind of wrapped up in my own issues the past few days. Ugh, it's not getting better, that's for sure. The agents are getting frustrated with it. They still haven't found the culprit. It took some- it took out some of our sen sentinels, which is really freaking people out. Sentinels? What are those? Oh, like they're- Oh god, am I gonna burp? Oh god, the time. Excuse me, we're not gonna find out until the next episode. So thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.